Good morning everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 1 to 5 and verses 12 and 13. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you thanks for another day of life. Lord, as this time of our lives progress i pray that each and every waking moment each and every moment not just waking each and every moment is given over to you dear lord so you can lead us in the way that we should be going in the things that we should be doing to do that good and acceptable and holy will which you have preordained for those who love you and that we may be conformed to the image of your son our lord jesus christ in all things that we do in every decision in every choice also dear lord you are able to keep us in that which is righteous in true judgment let us look at all situations and judge righteously and hold fast to those things which are good and reject the evil dear lord and i pray that our love for you is perfected dear lord Yes, we start off in reverent sphere <clears throat> and honoring you and where our love for you is lacking. I pray that the fear is remains so so that we don't sin against you in, in the things that we do in this life. So dear Lord, I just pray for each and every one of your people, those who, of your creation, those who are for you, part of your body, your, your church. Your bride, dear Lord, I just pray for each and every member that you keep us strong. I pray for those who shall come unto you, even if they're not there now, in the future, because we know each and every one of us at one point was alienated from you and were enemies of you. But it's only because of your grace, only because of your mercies, that we are able to celebrate you even today. So let us not look down upon our fellow man, but look to every single person as a creation of the Most High God. And if you are able to forgive us and to cleave and to reform us, you are able to do that for each and every person, dear Lord. So let there be no hate in our hearts or in our minds or any such thing. Let us be there be no no unforgiveness within us or anything like that. But that we live a life knowing that you have suffered all things for our sake you have done that perfect example and if you do, did it for us who were accounted enemies of the of the cross enemies of christ so that we can have eternal life and be called friends how much more are we supposed to do this to each and every person who we come in contact with so dear lord i just pray as always that we do that will which you have manifested unto us through our dear our dear lord and savior jesus christ so that we can please you in all things and that none of us may depart from the faith but that we hold fast and we stand firm persevering and enduring until the end so that when you are upon your return we shall be with you for eternity in your goodness in your grace in your heavenly kingdom and in your blessing and in your love forevermore so we thank you for all things, help our children, help our brothers and sisters going through persecution, help each and every one of us in all things, and give us a word this morning so that we may be edified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. All right, so First Peter chapter 4, 1 to 5 says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that suffer, suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings banquetings and abominable idolatries 
wherein ye think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. And verse 12 to 13 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happen unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Amen. All right. Pretty sure I, I, I covered this not too long ago, but as things and um, different situations happen you can have a different like interpretation not different as in it's not going to be uh it's not going to be um it's not going to line up with everything else as in you just get a some more understanding that should that's what i should say right and um verse one to five again it's just speaking about the suffering of christ and um how we who are Christ's will endure suffering because Christ did command us to be like him, right? And if he, we, if we are to be like him, we are to be like him in everything, right? As he walked this earth as flesh and blood, he had to suffer us because of our unbelief. Because he being Christ who came to for the salvation of mankind, he wasn't believed upon by everyone that he, he, he came into contact with, though he was... He was confirming who he was based on the signs, the miracles, and the fulfilling of the word that he was doing in, in, in the actual sight, right? But we know because of the hardness of the heart of men and their 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 understanding being darkened and their um their being sin, like the, the, the love of sin, they couldn't see Christ for who he was when he actually revealed himself to them. They may have had knowledge of who he is, but the wisdom and understanding was still dark. Their wisdom and understanding was still darkened. But we are in a good position because we actually we have the records of his of his um his life, his death, and his his resurrection and ascension, right? We have we have record of these things. And we have that 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 um promise of the holy spirit which is able to confirm these truths within us right so yeah we'll go back there to the suffering of christ if he suffered in the flesh we ought to also suffer it's so weird like jelani why why we have to suffer suffering right it's not it's not a bad thing in the context of living a life after Christ because when we suffer we are going against the flesh and the desires of the flesh to want to sin right that's why when um that's why when it says if we suffer in the flesh we have ceased from sin because we are rejecting sin we are rejecting that part of us which wants to 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 sin against God, which is as we said, the flesh, which which we have, right? The mortality, the flesh that we have, um, the, it, it wants to do things that are not godly, right? And um, verse two just said and say he he that no longer should what well, sorry he that that he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God, right? So if we suffer in the flesh, we put in away. I said this so many mornings, we're putting away those desires that are ungodly and we're living by the spirit of God, which is able to lead us into righteousness and to perform those the good, acceptable and perfect and holy will of God, which we have learned through and by our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So. So it shows us there that. The, the the author there which we assume is peter is not is not it wasn't there trying to pretty it up he's like look when we were not in this grace that we have found in christ jesus we we were living a life after the manner of the gentiles i would know the gentiles were the ones who weren't they weren't given the promise and the laws and all of that stuff it was given to the jews initially right the gentiles were the other people the other nations 
right? So they were more ungodly, or so we would think, right? Because the, the, the Jews we saw where they were ungodly, even though that they had the oracles of God given and the um the, the knowledge of who God was, right? But the Gentiles, I say, was just giving an example, not to say that the Gentiles are not redeemable that's not what we're saying but as we said their lifestyle as gentiles were were was ungodly right and then it said walk in lasciviousness and that's um like some extreme form of lust if i'm not mistaken lusts again that's it could be anything lust of the flesh lust of the eyes right um it could be um sexual immorality could be anything of that sort these are the things that we ought to be turning away from it's giving you excess of wine which is drunkenness and not being sober-minded right revelings which is like riot rioting banquetings which is like just raving and partying and abominable idolatries which could sum up anything that is you you you, you put over the love of our heavenly father through our lord jesus christ so it's showing that we all were we fall into some category of these right it wasn't an exhaustive um list but um each and every one of us if we're being honest can relate to something that we we that we 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 were doing in our past life that would have um come into one of these um examples that was listed here right and it says, <laughs> the, would, they said, people might think it's strange, right? When you don't do the same excess of riot. Like you don't do these things anymore. They might speak evil of you because they're looking at you. What, like, like Jelani, why, why you not? Why you not lust after every woman anymore? Why you not drink one bottle of apple vodka anymore? All right? Why you not? Well, we're rioting. We never really riot, but. Why are you not banqueting? Why are you not going partying and those things anymore and celebrate life or whatever? I'm doing it like that, right? Or why are you not idolizing those things anymore? People would look at it strange because obviously if you're still a part of these things, if somebody turns away from it, who you know used to do it before, it's going to look strange. Like what, what's, what's happened? What, why, have you, why, why are you looking at these things as wrong now? You used to do them before. But obviously, this is what Christ will do in a person when he, when he, when we come to accept Him. He will change us from who we were and conform us to His image, and that is not done overnight. As I always say, this is a process of time. As I said, everybody is different. Some people might just like cold turkey, just cut off and turn out, turn away from things immediately. Some they might take a little bit of more work and a bit more time but everything according to the will of god right so yeah so to be honest this is this is already prophesied this is a, this is already um written that these things will be done unto those who follow after christ as we said we're going to suffer for him so we're going to die to the flesh we're going to put away sin right and those things that we used to do in our past um time before we knew christ those things we're going to put away and we're going to be looked upon as evil in some cases and looked on and, and be spoken of as evil in the eyes of those who still continue in those things. Right. But as it said in verse five, mm. they, they, they who speak evil of those who follow after Christ, they shall have to they would have to give account to those things that they said. Right, when they think it's strange that you're not going after those things that they want to go after, mm -hmm. they, it's going to, it's going to. They, everybody would have to be judged um, on that day when Christ come back for us. So, you just, you just, you just live that life after Christ. Obviously, don't try to please people. Try to help people. Obviously, because sure, obvi we were actually um, given the charge to be a light unto everybody to. to gentiles and be a light unto you we be a light unto the world right so we just live our life model of a christ and then whatever the outcome whatever the world has in store for us or want to do unto us we have to just suffer it for christ's sake right he showed us that true example 
and um 12 verse 12 and 13 just went on to go like literally it's it's saying the same thing it's like don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as some strange things happen to you these things would try us obviously if we get hated by those ones that we used to what what we still love but they hate us because we're following christ sometimes we're gonna think like why god why is this happening to me why why <laughs> Right, uh, we know we have them times where we're like question God, like God, why, why is this happening to me, etc. But as it said, don't think it's strange, right? We we should be rejoicing, as it said, because we are suffering for Christ's sake. It says that we are partakers of Christ's suffering. We're suffering because of Him, right? Literally because of Him, because the world hates Him, right? The world is of the evil and the devil, and we know that the devil has no love in him for no one especially christ so you would want to do those things which are which are evil against those who are follow christ and um if we suffer that for christ's sake as i said happy are we because we are suffering for his sake that means we're actually doing we're living a life modeled after him right and it says that when the glory shall be revealed ye shall be glad also with exceeding joy because if we suffer for him in this life so as christ showed us he suffered in this life but when he was resurrected and ascended he is in his glory and in his eternal kingdom likewise we suffering in this life when we do depart from this place we shall be with him in his eternal glory eternal joy happiness um, no suffering then or any such thing no weeping no crying nothing that is bad right so we shall be glad in the day of his return but even now we are glad in our suffering and in our tribulations that we are counted worthy for suffering for christ's sake so i'll leave it at that this morning um these are verses that we go over ever so often. As I said, any under additional understanding that we get, because whilst we live this life, we do get understanding of the word because it manifests its, itself more when we go through certain tests and trials and tribulation. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that this morning. As always, just send in your questions or anything to the word at eTreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me and taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principle, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. So have a good day, everyone. God's willing, we'll catch up tomorrow.